Andrew Fury is the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. He's in Victoria. Premier, i got to ask, how, how did uh, Minister LeBlanc's comments uh, made on this program last night go down around the Premier's table today? Well, look, you know, I think there was uh, some uh, some issue with uh, Minister LeBlanc's uh, specific comments. But more importantly, I think there is a consensus around the table that we just want to be collaborative. We just want to work with the federal government because I think we all realize that Canadians really don't care at the end of the day about the rhetoric of the division of of the economics and the quantum and the calculus, all of which can be debatable. But we just want the federal government at the table. Canadians want and deserve a Canadian standard of care across the country. And they expect, and, and I think we need to be there as leaders uh, discussing collaboratively solutions moving forward. I want to dive in on, on that aspect in a minute, but just back to uh, Minister LeBlanc. I mean, basically, he, he, I mean, he didn't use the term fake news, but he accused you and your uh, fellow premiers of fudging the numbers, right? Saying, you know, you use a quote, fake figure of 22%. Whose numbers are right, yours or, or the Fed's? Well, as I said, like, as I said in the previous statement, it's, it's, for us, it's about the delivery of care. So if there's a problem with the calculus of the numbers, come to the table and we can discuss this. But Canadians expect a Canadian level of care. And what's not fake is that the Canadian healthcare system right now is in crisis. What's not fake is that there's people waiting for cancer surgery, there's people waiting for radiation, there's people waiting for diagnostic imaging. And that's across jurisdictions. That's not unique to a province or territory. That's across the nation. And when there's a national issue with that, that means that the federal government has to be at the table in a collaborative way, recognizing the urgency of this issue. Equally, though, the opportunity to reimagine the healthcare system, which is frankly designed for the 1960s. And it's an opportunity to modernize that moving forward. One of the issues you hear from uh, Minister LeBlanc and others um, is you know, what's being boiled down to whether or not strings are attached. Uh, and obviously uh, the feds you know, do want that. Will the provinces accept that? I mean, if it means you get a percentage or, or even all of the 28 billion you're requesting, is, you know, strings, are strings being attached uh, a possibility? Well, look, you know, that these are all things that should happen at a table. Uh, these are all discussions that should happen at a table. And I think, the provinces are open to discussions, uh, obviously some more and less, but that's the nature of Canada. That's the beauty of Canada. And we just want to have those discussions. Uh, right now, those discussions aren't happening in earnest, and we need to advance them. And so it's a, the quantum, how the quantum is delivered, how the quantum is accounted for. Uh, those are all things that we should discuss. I have heard some people suggest that this should be tied to outcomes. Look, there's no premier at the table there who wants to say who wants to deliver less outcomes, worse outcomes. That's not an issue. So if they're concerned about improving uh, healthcare standards and they're concerned about improving outcomes and delivering uh, top-notch care across the country, I think that's a consensus around the table. And we want to make sure that we're sitting at that table though with them uh, to to uh, have those important discussions, whether it's around jurisdictional issues, the quantum itself, the calculus of the quantum. But we we need to move past that because I can tell you as a physician standing at the end of the gurney the patient doesn't care about any of this they just want the top-notch quality Canadian care that we are renowned for around the world so where does this go from here I mean how do you get to that point I mean I think you know I, I, I think both sides would agree this country's always talking about this right this this is a forever uh, issue in Canada right and I think everybody agrees that the health care system systems if you want to go province by province needs more, right? There is money for it. So how do you connect that? The block in the middle, I think from the perspective of a lot of people, is just like, you know, politicians are fighting amongst themselves about how it gets there. But everybody agrees it needs to get there. So where does this go from here? How does this happen? Well, I, I couldn't agree more. And the finger pointing and the rhetoric, it doesn't help solve the equation. The, the acute issue that Canadians are facing is access to care, whether it's a family doctor or access to the emergency departments or diagnostic imaging. And we have a backlog, of course, that's been accelerated and amplified because of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so right now, I think the conversation needs to happen. I know the Prime Minister understands this. I know he understands the urgency of it. I think we need alignment amongst uh, all levels of government so that we can do what is required of us uh, and is demanded of us rightfully by all Canadians. You are a medical doctor, um, as is I your am. partner. Um, yes. What are you hearing from your medical colleagues 
on the ground? I mean, how, how bad is it out there? It's bad. And, uh, you know, uh, if we're being honest, though, it, was, it has been bad for a while. COVID-19 definitely uh, highlighted uh, the issues within the system and, and brought them uh, to everyone's attention. Uh, but wait lists were a problem before COVID-19. Uh, stress and strain within the system was a problem before COVID-19. But COVID-19 has really amplified it and, and exposed gaps that are truly crevices within the system. But I think there is an opportunity there to, again, rein, reinvent this system that was perhaps designed uh, for the 1960s and not modernized along the way. And some of that is financial, but some of that is, uh, of course, in how we deliver care and, and the opportunities that have been unlocked during the pandemic using technology or other things uh, need to be investigated. But to speak specifically to the workforce, they're stressed, they're strained, uh, they have undergone a significant uh, two years and with the utmost respect and gratitude on behalf of all Canadians, uh, we, we owe them a, a huge debt. Uh, but now we need to be there for them. Uh, they put in a heavy lift over the last two years. There's the pandemic, there's a shift in the workforce uh, as people are exiting, exiting the workforce, but equally the newer generations are not practicing the same as, as those who are leaving. So it's kind of a perfect storm of human resource issues, but it's also a, a paradigm shift in how medicine is, is practiced across the country. And I think that will be the real failure of all of this if we don't recognize this generational opportunity to reimagine the system that has served us so well, but we need to modernize it to ensure that it protects something that we're all very proud of as Canadians. And bottom line, now's the time to do that. Like talk. That's that's what's face to face, provinces, Ottawa, just do it. 100%, Paul, doing these interviews going back and forth, the, the, you know, with one side talking to a journalist and then the other side, that's not going to get this done. What we need to do is just sit down at the table and get it done. That's what Canadians, Canadians expect, and frankly, that's what they deserve. All right, Premier, thanks uh, so much for your time. Appreciate it. No problem. Take care. Jean-Yves Duclos is the Minister of Health. Minister, your cabinet colleague, uh, Minister LeBlanc, said uh, yesterday the provinces are using a, quote, fake figure of 22% when talking about the federal share of health care funding. Do you agree with him that provinces are using a fake figure? Well, we indeed want to avoid entering into a sterile debate about numbers, because if we were to fight around numbers, there are experts that are credibly saying that the federal government already exceeds the demand of provinces and territories, the 35% that they continuously quote. Now we would be at about 40% of, of total health funding now if we included tax points, as those experts argue we should. So we want to avoid those sterile debates because Canadians are interested in results. They're interested in, in how quick they can access a family health uh, team or family doctor, how long they would need to wait at an emergency room to have their uh, treatment, how long they would need to wait for a cancer uh, diagnostic or treatment. Say so they want to know uh, the quality of, of, of long-term care that their parents or grandparents would be receiving. So that's a type of results and things that people are thinking about. And that's exactly those conversations that we are having and want to be having with provinces and territories. But, uh, you know, you may want to avoid the debate, but the debate still exists. The provinces are saying, you know, that number, uh, federal government is saying another number. Can you blame people at home watching who, who just see that, that it's a math, you know, debate or, or bickering over numbers that, that doesn't resolve anything, and yet both sides are a part of it? Yeah, and that's exactly why we don't want to enter into that debate, because as we've just said, A, people are not interested in that. B, it does nothing to generate the results that Canadians want to see. And C, experts would be advising the federal government that if that were the, the thing on which we would need to focus, no, the Canadian government would already exceed the demands of provinces and territories. All right, so the situation, as you well know, uh, is that staff shortages are causing Emergency room departments to temporarily close. Staff are reporting burnout and an increased desire to leave their jobs, right? The problems out there are real. So when will the federal government sit down with the provinces and hash out a funding plan? What's the timeline? Well, let me first acknowledge what you've just said, Paul. I am currently now in, in Halifax. I've just met with the Nova Scotia Nursing Association, Nursing Union. They 
say exactly that. We have a healthcare worker crisis in Canada. Workers have left the profession in large numbers, in part and in large part because of COVID-19. Those that have remained are tired. They have, men they have been mentally and physically hurt by the, by the crisis, by COVID-19. We are in a situation in which our population is aging. Healthcare workers are also aging, uh, more chronic uh, condition uh, needs, you know, all sorts of technological uh, challenges that make it more expensive and more difficult to reach people. So this is a needed crisis. And, and I think we all agree on that. And we therefore need to work together to address it. Right. As we do that. When, though, when are you going to sit down and address it? I mean, I, I think both sides agree the problem is there and it's a serious one. The answer is to sit down, say the premiers, face to face and hash out a new funding plan. When's that going to happen? We have sat down with provinces and territories for the last two years and a half. We have, and we're still investing about $72 billion to support healthcare in provinces and territories. In addition to the Canada Health Transfer, just a few weeks ago, I announced an additional $2 billion uh, investment to reduce backlogs in surgeries, treatments, and diagnostics. And that was because we were having conversations with my colleagues health ministers around that time, signaling the importance of reducing backlog so that we immediately sent those $2 billion to provinces and territories. I just announced a few weeks ago, based again on those conversations with provinces and territories, an additional investment in securing the quality and the safety of long-term care homes in Canada. So these are big investments ongoing as we continue the conversation and the actions around the long term, longer term funding of our healthcare system. But, but surely you're not saying there, there isn't a need for further discussion. No, well, what I'm saying is, hey, we are having these discussions for the long term care around the funding of our healthcare system, but B, we're financing with at a very high level investments now needed to secure, protect and 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 prepare and prepare and repair our healthcare system. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't want to belabor this, but what the premiers are saying is it's time for a first minister's conference, that that is the way forward at this, at this point. And enough of the sort of as somebody put it today, you know, talking through the media and having different interviews, saying different things. It's, it's time for everybody to sit down at a big table and say, OK, let's figure this out. Is that going to happen? And I speak all the time with my colleagues, ministers of health across Canada, because we need first to agree on results. We want to see what type of results we want to achieve together before we speak of the dollars needed to achieve those results. And that's why those conversations uh, are, are, are sequential, first with my colleagues of health, because it's a health issue. Obviously, the healthcare, is a, the healthcare crisis is a health crisis. And that's therefore why I need to work, keep working with my colleagues, acknowledging their needs, reacting, as we've said, uh, with very significant immediate uh, funding uh, um, funding uh, allocations to provinces and territories as we prepare for the long-term increases that the Prime Minister has already signaled will be coming. The, the other aspect uh, that's uh, uh, taking up a lot of uh, space today is this notion of conditions. You are willing to offer the provinces money, but with strings attached. The provinces say that's a non-starter. Is that it? Is that, is that the end? Or, or is your government willing to, to budge on that position? Well, let's, let me first say that it should always be very clear that the federal government is unable and will never try to micromanage the healthcare system in Canada. Ma managing the healthcare system in Canada is a provincial and territorial responsibility and jurisdiction. Second, this is a shared responsibility. If it wasn't a shared responsibility, the federal government wouldn't be funding provinces and territories for healthcare. And therefore, we need to agree on results. I call that the triple R rule. No, the R, respect for jurisdiction. The second R, shared responsibility. And the third R, focus on results, because that's what Canadians want. Acknowledging we have a responsibility to work together, but focusing on the results that they want to see. So, for instance, how, how fast do we want to reduce the time it takes to have access to a family health doctor? How quickly can we reduce the backlogs in surgeries and treatments? How quickly do we want to increase the access to mental health care, to long-term care services, home care services? These are the type of results that Canadians want us to see. 
uh, in our collaboration with provinces and territories. So that's, yes, uh, there will be conditions uh, no matter what you're saying. A, absolutely no uh, ambiguity as to who is responsible for managing the healthcare system. It's a provincial jurisdiction. The federal government should always acknowledge that. B, acknowledge that as we fund and work together on, on healthcare, we need to agree on common results. We need to, 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 to wait for and to listen to those results that provinces and territories will want to signal as, a, as important results for the federal government to support with its funding. We've run past time, Minister, but I just want to put to you what Canadians are thinking, which is that they're tired of seeing politicians bicker about this and that they just want it done. Do you, do you accept federal responsibility in you know, being a party to this not being resolved at this point? We indeed want a positive conversation full of hope and full of results because that's what Canadians want. As I said earlier, I've been talking to nurses here in Nova Scotia. They want the federal government to work with their province and provinces and territories to lead uh, Canadians to a better set of results for themselves, their children and their families. All right, Minister, we'll leave it at that for today. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.